What's going on, your boy DJ Black Mark Say Diddy, and welcome oh. to another episode of the Street Life Series. And today we got the funniest man coming out of San Francisco, Hannibal Thompson. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Stupid. Yes, Lord. So, yes, comedy Lord. is life. Tell me about that. What is that about? Uh, I was, man, to be honest with you, man, I was looking for something that, you know, like as comedians at the shows, mm -hmm. we like to give people like memorabilia, what I like to sell people memorabilia stuff. Merch, like, yeah. Merchandise, you know. And I was thinking about, you know, what can I put on a T-shirt or like a, just just a T-shirt. Right, if you don't right. got DVDs, you got T-shirts. Right. So I was, I came up with a lot of stuff. At first I just had this shirt with my face on it and my name. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's kind of like, I sold a lot of them, but it was like, that's like cheesy. So I'm like, all right. Uh, comedy is life. That's mm -hmm. simple. I didn't know it was gonna do it. You know, just do it. So just, I just put comedy is life, and then me and my home girl Monique uh, came up. I came up with you know Paul is life. Right, so right. Comedy is oh, life. Okay. But she came up with the uh, idea to put the eyes and microphone, and it just been you know popping ever since. I'm popping ever since. I've been seeing it pop up everywhere. I'm just like at first I was like, what the hell is comedy is life? Who is that? Right. And then I was like seeing where it was coming from. I was like, huh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But comedy hasn't always been life for you. Nah, man, not at all. This is new. This is new, but it's uh, it's been a blessing. Right. Like every, it's been a blessing. Every single step of the way has been a blessing. So comedy is kind of like what saved your life in a sense. Yeah, yeah, man. Real talk. I was uh, just by my demeanor and how I'm always smiling and shit. You can't tell. Right. But man, I was you know running the streets. I didn't even like know the, that was you. Yeah. I remember you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Mark. For real, like we from the same neighborhood. Man. Yeah. Like, hey, we yeah. ain't never had no problems, but I'm like, I remember, bro. I'm just kind of like, did you grow a foot? Like, yeah. from me, like high school. I did, man. I was like six two in the eleventh grade. That's why and we I, walked in. I was like, who is this motherfucker? Right, right, right. Like, you had to grow like a foot or something. Yeah. Go ahead. I was like six two in high school, and I I was growing more like yeah. at the high school. So I don't know. It was kind of weird, man. But uh, at the high school, it's weird because I went to high school in Vallejo. Like, I had to go finish high school. I wouldn't go finish school in the city, you know? No, yeah. wouldn't. Nah, man. <laughs> nah, <laughs> <laughs> so petty. Every eighth grade, I was getting, what, 0 0.34s? I said, man, let me go and get a body here. Yeah. But uh, my mom, uh, one day I got kicked out of school, mm -hmm. and I came home, and she had a surprise for me. What'd you do to get kicked out? Uh, I was I was, I was, was talking shit to the uh, counselor. Her name was Miss Hickey. She was a heavyset lady. What school? At Everett. Oh God! At Everett, <laughs> and I was I was roasting her. I was singing on her, capping on her, whatever. Right, right. And she kicked, she suspended me, kicked me off. I guess I was talking too disrespectful. She kicked me out of school. My mama, you know, uh, uh, was yelling at me. She told me to come home. I get home. She had a surprise for me. She ain't with my ass or nothing. But as soon as I got in the living room, like five minutes later, when I got home, my dad pulled up to the front of the mm -hmm. house from Don't Vallejo. Black ass up out of here. Let's go. I'm like, what you mean? Let's go. I got to go to school tomorrow. Nah, let's go. Took me from the city. I lived on Eddie, fourteen forty six Eddie, and uh, I was went to school in Vallejo all the way to up to high school from the eighth grade. I was crying sh like shit for the first three months. That's crazy. <laughs> she that pulled the straight boys in the hood on you. Pulled the boys in the hood on me. That's what I was like. like oh I was yeah, hella mad. Mom's like, oh, okay, you want to act up? Call your daddy over here. I was mad, boy. I was mad. But it worked out for you, though. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out, man. I would, but like you know, I played hoops and shit in, in Vallejo, Vallejo High School, Vallejo Middle School, like. Four days after I graduated, literally, yeah. I was in, back in the city. That's what I was going to say, because I was like, that ain't the end of the story. <laughs> you back in Fillmore. I was back in Fillmore, man. That's when, uh, and uh, even when I came back, though, it was cool. I was supposed to go to school. I was supposed to go to Eastern Arizona for, like, performing arts and play basketball. Right, right. And um, I'm, it's the summertime. My best friend, uh, Wheezy, Wayne, we from the same neighborhood. We having fun. We breaking the cars and shit. I was smoking a little weed. I ain't don't even smoke weed. Look stupid as fuck. Hitting blunts, but. We smoking weed and you know, watching movies. That's what we like to do. Deal with girls, you know, just running around, you know, right, in the summertime. Right. So like around uh, my birthday, August, I got a trust fund. Okay. I got so I got some money. How much though? Uh, like twenty thousand. Oh, okay. You know, it was some like twenty thousand. Took a change. You know? Eighteen, twenty thousand. I thought it was rich. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's what Jabos is popping too. That nigga had every color. Every color. I was buying a new outfit every day. I still I was doing I was still doing what I was doing. Right, right. But I had this money. So I still was doing what I was doing. So I had a little money. So I was buying cars and you know outfits and shit. You know, running around uh, film mode, just having fun. Right, Summer right. Summer jam and you know having fun. And around November came and um, my best friend got killed on Eddie and Webster, mm -hmm. a Wheezy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I ain't never, I ain't never felt that. Yeah. Like I felt my granny passing away like a year before, but and that was hard. Right, but I ain't right. never felt that. So that took me like to another place, like, and like for the first few months, man. After he got killed, I was just lost. Yeah. I was just lost, man. I was, I was more angry though, more mad, and uh, and that was that's where you know that's where it all really popped off, and I was just running around Filmo just. Being bad per se. <laughs> I, like I said, I remember you. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was running around feeling more being bad. Man, I was uh, you know, I was I was mad, man. I was hella mad. I was like my brother. Right, we grew right. up like grew up together. I was like I was always the oldest of like nine kids, but that was like the brother, he was like weak he was oh, two weeks older than me. So oh, it was shit. like we was like the same age. Right, right. So, you know, that was like, that was my boy. Like, we, every day, we, I lived at 1446, lived at 1448, like, right next door. Yeah. So, if I get in trouble, he got in trouble. Whatever he did, you know, most likely yeah. I was did a deal, yeah. So, when he got killed, man, it just took me, you know, it, it, it took me to a whole nother level, mm -hmm. a life. Like, I, I never forget, I was, uh, uh, where was I at? Japantown. Japantown, looking in cars. Breaking a car. Right. That's how we <laughs> same thing they do. I probably yeah. busted my fucking car right there on Eddie and Fillmore, nigga. Nah, that's too close. We ain't go. That's out of yeah, bounds. Okay, nigga. That's that, was around, <laughs> that was around the time that shit was happening too. Uh, look, he the one that started that that's shit. That's what I'm nah. saying. Got everybody doing that shit around the hood. Nah, man. that's out of bounds. Eddie and Fillmore. That's out of bounds. We ain't breaking yeah. no cars on Eddie and Fillmore. <laughs> okay. Eddie and Webster maybe, but we ain't going Eddie and Fillmore to break no car. That's yeah. out of bounds. You might get shot in the ass. Right. But um I remember like yesterday, um, I got a call that uh he got shot in the head. And I'm like, man, quit lying. I'm, like, I'm serious. But I can hear all the ambulance and police driving to Eddie and, and Webster. So I, I run down there, he laying down there, his mama uh uh rocking him in her arms. He got a bullet in the back of his head, you know, so <laughs> that tripped me out. I was, you know, I was on one after that. Yeah. We uh I ran back to to the neighborhood where I'm from, to OC, and um, everybody just crying, and there's a bunch of commotion going on. They trying to control me. I wasn't like the dude to go wild and throw shit. I just was like crying. Right, right. And after that, man, I just it just life just took a toll on me. I was uh, I ain't never been to jail as a juvenile. Oh, what? At all? I never been to jail. Never been to juvenile. At all. I ain't go to jail until I came back. You know, to Fillmore and uh, uh, start running around Fillmore. So I was catching cases. Uh. Got a part of the uh, uh, the gang injunction, yeah. the city gang injunction. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was a part of that. So man, they take you to jail for any little thing, man. They don't care. You in that area, man? They coming to get you. And even just about the area, because you can just do anything. Like man, they didn't like you so much. I remember I, I, a cop was walking towards me. He wasn't like <laughs> he was walking this way. I was walking this way, right. and I spit like in the bushes. Yeah, he put me handcuffs, took me to police station. Gave me a ticket to uh, go to court. I didn't go to court. I had a warrant for that. Just some st stupid yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Just little shit. Yeah, but I was going to jail. Uh, houses getting raided. You know, a bunch of stuff. They was trying to, man. They was raiding a lot of niggas. They was raiding a lot of niggas. They was raiding, man. They was, uh, I remember like in a span of six days, man, they raided a house every day with a search warrant with my name in the projects. I grew up in OC. Right, right. Like, but they was, I don't know what they was looking for. Like, they was, you know, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I ain't no big time. I ain't no, listen, I was. I sold it all, but I wasn't no, I wasn't selling keys, and I ain't sitting nobody house with no dope or nothing like that. You know, I wasn't. But you had that twenty thousand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. You know what I'm saying? You probably flatten. But Instagram and shit wasn't around back then, like nah. And they had MySpace, but I was, Woo. yeah. But I was the dude to when I was in the streets. I was in the streets. Don't take no pictures of me or nothing. I want nobody to know how I look or nothing. Right, right. Yeah, I was like, like I had some devilish ways back then. So how'd you know you was gonna get into comedy? It's weird. I always knew I was gonna do something like comedic acting. Yeah. That was like one of my big things, comedic acting. Uh, but I just, I don't know. It's weird because the streets was a phase, and I always knew it was gonna be a phase. Mm -hmm. It's just about survival in the streets, man. It's about survival. It's like who, you know, you gotta play fair. Right. The streets ain't fair, but as long as you, you know, stay true to yourself and play fair, as in far as, you know, don't don't do nothing dirty, don't do nobody dirty, don't stab nobody in the back, don't you know, don't mm -hmm. be on no. No police shit and nothing, you know. But other than that, you know, you just got to survive. The streets is about survival, right, right. And it's only two two ways out the streets. Uh, no matter how you like it, how you see somebody do it on TV, or whatever, you going to jail, you going to, or you gonna get killed. Yeah, right? that's simple. And them the only two options. Like I don't know nobody who beat the streets. Nobody. So comedy was like the comedy only option for you. Yeah, I left the streets straight into comedy. 
And how's that been working out for you? Uh, great, man. It's been working out, like, real good. You been like, going on tours and... Yeah, I've never been on an airplane before I started doing comedy. Really? Mm-hmm. Never. So yeah. people are flying you out? Yeah. The different countries, man. I've been to Japan and Abu Dhabi, uh, Dubai, and Kuwait, and Guam. There's all these places that I didn't even know existed, to be honest with you. Yeah, I went to school, but we ain't talk about... Uh, well, I knew about Japan, right? But other than that, we ain't talk about you know a bunch of stuff in school, you know, in the states. But all this, this, the places I go, man, it's great. You be unbelievable. Cool. I go to Canada like four times a year, just you know, to do comedy. Just to do comedy, man. What's the weirdest shit you ate in Japan? Because uh, I heard some, they got some weird dishes over there. I don't see that's the thing with me. I don't eat. <laughs> I don't. I don't be. I don't mess around with the weird shit. You should have asked the weird shit in Kuwait. Right. Oh yeah, what you mean in Kuwait? Oh nah, man. See, I almost got in trouble. But you gotta eat. Like, <laughs> yeah, you got weird laws and shit. Yeah, like Kuwait. But what you go. What I do is I go over there perform for the troops. So oh, okay. I'm on a military basis. Right, right. But, oh, so so they, you safe? Yeah, you safe. You got American food too, though. Oh yeah, you good. I but thought she was like in the jungle. The catch in Kuwait. <laughs> <laughs> nah, in Kuwait I was in the desert. I was in one of Saddam Hussein's one of his old camps that that we took from him. Mm. Oh, well. I was on video performing. It got like holes, big old bombs where they drop the bombs at. Yeah. They still got the holes in the buildings and everything. It's kind of weird. But they, the servers who serve the food over there, they people from Kuwait. They're not us. They like so. I was saying something pretty loud in one of the cafeterias one time. I'm like, like y'all comfortable with them serving us? You don't think they gonna put nothing in the food or something? They're like, shh, you can't say that too loud. I'm like, <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. Other than that, it's cool, man. In Japan, I ate some noodles. That's about it. I ain't eating nothing else, man. I'm noodles? noodles? How long was you out there? I was in Japan for uh, the tours. Usually go from around eight to eleven days. Hmm. So I was in Japan for like three days, I think. Yeah, I was in Japan three days. Well, look, I know this is kind of like old, right? Mm-hmm. But what you think about Monique and her oh, rant and Netflix? Yeah, and Netflix. Oh, and Netflix. You being a, co- a comedian, getting into the game, right? Uh huh. I don't know. I don't want to say I know you would, but I would hope you would take a deal uh, if Netflix came at you with any amount of money. Man, right now, no doubt. Right, but, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, Monique, uh, it's weird, man. We in a like, no matter how you put it, we in a like, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. Type of business. And then if you say that, then with Monique or anybody else, they would point at somebody else. Well, okay, look at Dave. Yeah, look at Dave. Dave ain't been on TV seriously in probably ten years or plus. Yeah. Like honestly. But then again, Dave Chappelle can do this. He can show up to San Francisco on a Monday and call the comedy club and say, Hey, uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. I want to come do three shows on Tuesday and hang the phone up and the comedy club is sent out an email blast and he'll sell out in five minutes. True. Five minutes and he just called Monday, but the show is tomorrow, Tuesday. Right, right. That's that's real talk. You do it at the punchline all the time. Right, right. Monique, on the other hand, Monique is a legend. She's great, but let's be. She can't do that. She still got to do radio to sell tickets. She still got to do morning TV to sell tickets. Dave Chappelle don't do none of that. You just advertise. Dave Chappelle gonna be here, and he sell out twelve, uh, twelve shows in a row at Radio Music City Hall in New York. Do you think that she was still undercut though for five hundred thousand? For Monique, from uh, yes. And let me tell you, let me let me tell you, let me let me tell you let me tell you why she. I don't think she. I don't think she was necessarily undercut. I think it was a deal to okay, show me that you can. If we give you five hundred thousand, show me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Let, let us give you. I think it was more of a let us give you five hundred thousand to see if you can make a million or make five hundred. I think it was a, more of a business decision. Right. I think she should. Me personally, I think she should have took the deal and proved her, to to them her numbers. You know. Well, the thing about that is, if you guys watched when she saw what she was saying, she was saying that they had seen her recent comedy shows that she had done, like out here in Oakland. She had a show recently and a couple of other places, and they saw that she had sold it out. They saw her recent material. Y'all also understand that No Monique hasn't really done a lot of movies and stuff lately, but she had other issues with other people in the industry. So she's been saying she's being blacklisted. Now, as a woman in the industry and a black woman in the industry, what she's arguing is very motherfucking real. Me and Marcus will go get the same job, and they'll give Marcus more money than they'll give me off top. Oh, that's a fact. That's, that's like, yeah. And so I think I that people get hung up on. <laughs> nigga, I do more. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Marcus. But the people money. get hung up on the fact that Monique, because she has these issues with Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey and whatever, whatnot. And unfortunately, because of the issues that she's had in the past, it's also overshadowing what she's saying now. And I also think that if she wasn't so forceful and in your face and blunt with it, that people will receive it easier. 
But people are automatically turned off when they see the quote unquote angry black woman and they automatically are like, oh, she tripping. Yeah. And I don't think necessarily that was the that was the case with with Netflix. Yeah. Netflix just playing the numbers in the business game. That's all. Like Monique, she did, like she said, she did a recent movie in 2016 that did great. Like in numbers, as far as the budget, it did it did great. And she's Monique. She but like, I didn't see it. Was she the main character? Or yes, she was one of the main characters. She had a, a see if she wasn't the main character, she was one of the main char- characters. She just didn't have a role. But it, then again, we talking about Monique. Monique is, you know, rightfully so a legend. Mm-hmm. She got you know the show, and she's a legend. I'm just you know keeping it real. I only know her from the Parker. But a right, precious. And, and more, we should, yeah, but she, right. that wasn't her Queens movie. Queens of comedy. Though. That was in 2000. What she got an ax, uh, Oscar for Precious though, man. And she said, but, but that wasn't comedy. Well, acting. That's true. right. Comedy. I hear you. I She's hear you. She's asking for money for a comedy special. She was doing a drama role and got paid Okay, for that. she was saying, this is what she said. She said she brought up Amy Schumer. Yeah. That she got $13 million. Don't get it twisted. She Monique didn't deserve $13 million. Doesn't Amy Schumer also have a show on like HBO? And- it's like, come on. Get right. That's so I I'm get saying. that argument. Right. I get it when people are like, you can't compare yourself to Amy Schumer because what she's doing currently. But, I mean, I just think five hundred thousand and compared to thirteen million. Yeah, but to prove I yourself feel as, a, as, a, as like that, yep. you can actually do five hundred thousand. Because I didn't believe it either. Like when I was like, "What is she tripping about?" Like she's not even like no. it's like it's, it's like this. Uh, they did they, they they brought this up. Amy Schumer sold out Madison Square Garden twice. Okay. Save Monique sold out the Improv in San Jose. Twice. That's five hundred seats or seven hundred seats. One of them. Come on, man. That's twenty thousand seats. So They're it's a numbers that. game. It's it's based on who they think will come to Netflix and watch. Exactly. Because of her. Exactly. But look at Tiffany Haddish. 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 So Haddish, yeah. Haddish. Haddish sounds more bougie to me. So yeah, right. I'm gonna stick with Haddish. That's funny though. <laughs> For real, I like it's like Target right. versus Target. I like Target. Right. So didn't they offer her like two million? And she's For, one of the hottest. For uh, black Netflix, comedians right now. I don't think they. I don't for a special. I don't think she. Not we don't know because she never did his Netflix special yet. She did Showtime. There was a rumor I read it like a month ago that, and Monique addressed it where they said that she signed a deal for like two million with Netflix or with one of those people to do a comedy series. It, yeah, it was for like I think it was for more of like a show that they wanted her to be on. It wasn't for a comedy special. It wasn't a comedy special. No, see, sure? com- I'm positive. Like okay. comedy special is different. You know, it's but, different. Than- but I think if. Monique would have asked for that deal back when she did Queens of Comedy. They would have gave her the money. And they, the thing with her is that you also have to realize, and I'm taking up for her because I get where she's coming from. Black woman. I, I mean, I get what you she's saying. support your sisters. <laughs> right. You I know what I mean? I mean, I agree with how you delivery, you. You. but like, you. I understand her personality and all of that. Because, uh-huh. I mean, she just looks, she reminds me of my big sister. So it doesn't phase me when people are like, she got all this attitude. I'm like, y'all think that's attitude? That ain't shit. Yeah, I, I'm, you know what I mean? I mean, me personally, and I'm, I'm but, in the game, it's like, the attitude and all that is like, okay, whatever. But she also made a statement where she said, you know, she came back and said, you no, know, 500000 wasn't going to do it. And she wanted to, you know, negotiate. They would, uh, they basically was like in the story after that. Like, okay, well, we just can't do a deal then. Right. So you basically, they're saying that she's not even worth negotiating with. But it's either five hundred or that's it. Versus Amy Schumer, she wasn't originally offered $13 million. Nah, she was offered like eleven. They gave her like $2 million more, I believe. Or less than that. Right. And she came she- back and was like, hold on, you got... Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and all these people who just got eleven million. I need more, and so they gave her thirteen. Right. So Monique is also coming from a point of you guys aren't even willing to negotiate with me when I said five hundred thousand. I sh- I deserve but, more. But that's what happens when you like you 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 command so much. Like Amy Schumer for it. She a hot ticket right now. She a hot ticket. Yeah. I'm just keeping it real. She a hot Ooh. ticket. So she can she got more control of the nego- of the negotiations. Of course. That's number one. Number two, if I like to keep it real with y'all. Monique need to like go. She need to change her reps. Her husband don't need to be represented no more. You think that he's? <laughs> I think that he is because he. I just by reading. I don't know them personally, but just by you know read stuff. It's like I think she just need to you know go ahead, bro. You be a husband. I'm gonna be a wife, but I'm gonna go get some different reps because I think you know I seen him going back and forth with Will Packer a few weeks ago or something. Like he's always he's always going back and forth with somebody like. Always. I mean, that's your husband. That's your manager. But still, I think she need to, she need to uh, cut that loose. Yeah, she need to cut that loose and go on and you know get some different reps. Somebody she trusts and all that, but not the husband because he seems like that's he always. Not fair. You don't think it's, it's fair? fair? 
Because you got to understand, we don't know if, if Monique is the one being like, no, I'm not doing this. And you as my manager need to be out there representing me as if you are me and stating what I'm saying to you, but not making me say it. Because there's oh. a lot of people do that. Artists come here all the time and be sweet as pie. But their manager has been directed to tell people no photos, no nothing. Don't touch me. No. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So he might have to be the fall guy and the bad guy in the situation. And then, uh, like, on, and, but... In reality, like all this is coming out now, and I know they got social media and stuff like that. But Monique, uh, she did Queens of Comedy years ago. Yeah. She did other movies years ago. You never heard none of this about Monique until now. When did she? I don't even know when she got married and when he became her manager and all that. You didn't. You ain't never heard none of this until now. Queens of Comedy probably was the biggest thing she's done. She's done in her career. How big it was. They were selling out arenas. But she you know. was getting blackballed but like, that's shortly my after the Oscar. Shortly after the Oscar, yeah, yeah. and that was the, that was with the the Lee Daniel things, and that's why I said it's yeah. like I don't know why she was getting. It's kind of hard to do anything if you're getting blacklisted. But that's it. That's it. Yes, that's in any it industry is. though. Like you got to get along with your colleagues. Yeah, you got to get along. You, right, you got to. So if you, you got to, are the, if you are but the common you, denominator in every situation you go into, eventually motherfuckers gonna be like, you know what? I don't want to work with her. Especially right. being black, yeah, they quote unquote yeah. ain't got to do it but being black you know we got to stick together you got to get along with your colleagues and you, you and you can't like you got to play the game you got to play the game you got to play exactly. the game man. Right. you got to play the game exactly but you know like to your point though what's the lady name Amy Amy Schu yeah Amy Schu she's selling out Madison Square Garden twice right. twice <laughs> you can make a valid argument like look I need more money yeah like <laughs> twice Monique did Queens of Comedy and yeah and but she can justify that. I hear what you're saying, because she can justify that by saying, you want to record my material when I can take this material on a tour for the next three months and this, make $13 million. This, She should have you know did I mean? that. Right. Don't, 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 don't lash out at Netflix for not wanting to fuck with you. Right. Because now, too, if there's another stream of service that come about, they're like, right. man, we ain't even going to deal with her. Cause you see, it. and now yeah. he got a point there. Y'all ever went to a Kevin Hart show? Yeah. Y'all yeah. realize like every single time you go to a Kevin Hart show, they always say no cameras, no recording. Of course. You escorted that's every out comedy show, yeah. And then shortly afterwards, there's a Netflix special or a comedy special for yeah. Kevin Hart. So he's making it on both ends. Right. Right. You're right. That's, I feel like, what she should have done. She, she, exactly. Keep your mouth shut like, okay, you think I'm worth 500 right now? Exactly. Cool. Watch Let exa me build this brand. I'm going to show you what I can do. Now when you come back, I'm but gonna charge you to double that what you. That's own. why she should. That's it is hard. Yeah, but that's why she should have took the Netflix deal, because and stand up. Listen, they can blackball her all she want, but can't nobody stop them people from coming to see you live. Because if she had taken that Netflix deal, she could have then gone on tour with new material, and then it would have been more draw because people saw her Netflix. Back. Exact. Plus the five hundred thousand that they already given her now, and then if she would have did numbers, they would have gave her another some million or two. You know who who knows. So that's why she should have took the deal. And then she, I seen she, it said in the contract, or she said that, oh, they said with the five hundred thousand, I couldn't do material for, I couldn't do, I couldn't perform for two years. Mm -hmm. That's not true. They just don't want you to. <laughs> they, yeah, that's not, cause she can put it how she want to put it, but that's not true. That you, they just don't want you doing the material mm -hmm. from the special. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. they're not gonna say, "Hey, you can't perform for two." No, that's, need, they're not. You gotta write new shit. Yeah, yeah. Then you just need them. They're not gonna say you can't perform for two years. No, she probably make three million dollars a year. She said that on stand up. She said that on the Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, Monique with in, in the, on the Breakfast Club. On the breakfast, yeah, she said that. She's done multiple interviews about. Yeah, this. she what said that they had a contract. She showed the contract on Instagram stuff about. They said she can't perform. That's not true. They, I'm I'm one thousand percent sure that's not true. Yeah, As, I don't think they would stop your money. Nah, you know like, nah. Nobody you? stop your money, bro. Nah. She was tripping. Unless you sign a story, Daniel's contract. Then you. Can, <laughs> you know. But yeah. you came in with your, this your family. Yeah, that's my that's my fiance and, and my stepdaughter. Uh oh, you gonna get married? Yeah, I'm gonna get married, man. When? Uh, probably next year. Holy shit! Yeah, man, you gotta get married. Fun. Yeah. What's your name? Manisha. Hi, Manisha. She over there tired. <laughs> That's London. Hi, London. Hi, London. <laughs> so how's it being a family man in comedy now? Uh, it's good, man. I get to take them on. I get to take them on the road with me sometimes. So that's cool. I ain't got to be, man. Everybody be thinking this all glitz and glamour, man. Be, you be lonely on the road, man. Mm. Yeah. You be lonely on the road. You don't want to be dealing with nobody and taking girls back to your hotel and all that. It's not me, especially. <laughs> it's like, man, I be tired, man. You get lonely on the road. You bring the fam with you is like more of, of an adventure. 
Right, right. You get to show them something different while you seeing something different and stuff. So I, I I like it. So so something a little bit more current, right? Last week we were just talked about the Breakfast Club. And Envy hmm. started tripping. Yeah. What, what's the what's the, what's the dude's Jesus name? Deezus and Mero. Deezus and Mero. Yeah. yeah. Mero and Deezus. You better watch Deezus and Mero. That shit's hilarious. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to watch it now. Like, yeah. I can, like, I'm, Yo, that I'm was like now. the best promo for them motherfuckers. Right. You know what I mean? Guarantee you. They like, gonna double and triple. Ratings went yeah, yeah, yeah. instant that night. Yeah. So do you think he acted like accordingly or did he overreact? Would you have done the same thing for your no. fiance? No. Absolutely not. Would you be mad at and him that, for that? <laughs> Wait, this is after a cheating scandal though that's gone super right. viral and True. like True. they're adding more fuel to the fire. Right. Me personally, me personally, absolutely not. I ain't that sensitive, man. Not you know, saying I don't know uh, DJ Amy personally, but I I would not saying he's sensitive, but I wouldn't have like I would have said something to them off the camera. That's at least. the shit I didn't understand. That's what I would have said. Now, I would have said something to him off the camera. I get it, because he was they said something to him publicly. Yeah. So he had to address it publicly. It was a joke. It was right, a joke. And I get that. It was a joke. But even if you take it disrespectful, right? Like let's just say But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I hear what you're saying, but he was that nigga was hot. Right. He was hot. He, he got was up ready and left to, out. He was, he was ready to fight somebody. He was hot. I, know, I know where that came from. Like his wife probably going off like on him at home. You know what I'm saying? Be like, a man, beat a man. Right. I get that too, but shit, man. I'm sure you know. Yeah, but you know, how's it your woman, man? She tripping. You like, yeah, and but you it's, didn't, and you didn't fucked up. But it's it's not like it, it like it was a perfect situation. But it's different because number one, he did he's DJ Envy, right? And he's a part of a cheating scandal, right? Listen, man, you can't get in the business to be like, oh, now everything and all this is private. No, it don't work that way. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Especially like, when you don't want to put the shit out there. Yeah, right. it's not work that way. I mean, I, I just feel like everybody's entitled to how they feel. You feel something disrespectful? Say it. It's right. cool. But once a motherfucker apologize. It should have been done. You got to drop it. That's why I said he took it too far. Yeah, I'm like, man, you was on some, like, what's wrong with you, bro? He right. wanted to antagonize these niggas and try to instigate some shit, in my opinion, because he was taking it. And scare him. I was, I, yeah, I like, like he he's scare flexing. Him. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I say he could have said something to him off off camera. You know, probably would have been a little better. And I get their reaction because instantly they're like, yo, I'm sorry, because I've been blindsided <laughs> with some shit yeah, yeah, yeah. that was recorded, but we didn't put out. Right, right, right. Because... I was like, what the fuck? Because I'm, I mean, I just, that's not what I do. I don't attack people in my interviews and shit. So right. if you felt like I was attacking you, right. I'm sorry. Now, mind you, it can go either way. I can go DJ Envy route or Shay route and just be like, all right, nigga, well, you talking to yourself at this point? Because after I fucking apologize, <laughs> nigga. Right, right, right. There ain't nothing to talk about. And I don't understand why everybody's so sensitive. God damn. <laughs> Niggas is soft, bro. Niggas is soft, man. Like, why is everybody so sensitive, man? Like, God, like, it's an epidemic. I really feel like nowadays, every day goes by, men are becoming more and more insecure right. and soft and emotional. Taking and jokes. social media is adding to it. Social media That's is like... That's what it's doing. Yeah, man. I got a love and hate relationship with love and social media. <laughs> Not for real, man. Because like, social, I love social media. You know, the only reason I hate it, I, I hate it because you, you just can't say certain shit these days. Like, at all. Oh, yeah. Everybody takes everything to heart, man. Everything. Like, everything. It's like crazy. Like, that was a big, and it's not over. They said something else after the interview. Oh, that shit at night when they yeah, got yeah. in their show and they watched yeah. the video. The interview, the interview? Yeah, they said something else. That shit was Who said something? Uh, Jesus and Meryl. Jesus, they, yeah. Their show is basically watching shit and talking about shit that happened right. in the world. Right. right. They watched that video of them getting checked by Envy and was cracking mad jokes throughout the shit. <laughs> it was hella funny. And Envy tweeted, I wish they had that same energy in my face. Right, right. So it's like it was a back and forth thing. It's like it's pointless. Though. But like you didn't, I don't know. He Y'all ambushed did. them though. That was that <laughs> was an ambush. Like yeah, and it was kind of like. Wait a minute, like you. No, I'm telling y'all, as somebody who's been on camera when that shit happened, you're like, wait the fuck, am I? Is this really happening? Am right, I, right, are right. Are you like really mad? Are you joking? Right, like, right. So I, I get it. And then afterwards, you're like, hold the fuck up. When you have a second to really, you know what I mean? All right. When he said, would you, would, would, would honestly, would you have apologized to him? Every yeah, yeah. Like when he asked, him, like yo, y'all. Well, he was like, "What he say? Like, y'all, you need to y'all apologize." Yeah, I, my def- wife. I definitely yeah. would apologize. Like my bad, bro. Like I didn't mean to disrespect you. Uh-huh. But after that, I'd be like, "Hold on, bro. Like, are you trying to check me?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> it was like, 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 like we trying like, to take this. I said but my see, bad. That move, that move is will cause you to lose endorsements, possible suspensions. That's it. fucking with your money at this point. I get it, but at the same time, you gonna respect me as a man at any time. I don't give a damn about none of that. Yeah, because I ain't got it yet. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, right. I can, but if I had it, I don't know. Right now, 
if I say my bad, right, and you keep coming at me like, wait a minute, what are you trying to do? Like, what's the next step? Because I'm about to take this apology back in a but second. But they said that we already apologized, so I don't understand why we're still talking about this, yeah. right? Like, and then, me, and then I would have, I would have, I wouldn't even did all that like on on camera. Right. I would have, I would have said, look, I said sorry, and then would have kept going. I would have been cool, you know, acting, playing. <laughs> but when the camera and, and the interview was over and went off, then I'd have been like, we both grown, you grown, I'm grown. Bro, you stand right here, uh, with Charlemagne. Other bro, you stand right here. Let's go outside. Yeah, that okay. is that. He don't want to go outside. Then you wasn't talking about nothing when that the camera was on. Happen. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but that's what you gotta tell. You, you gotta show the world. Like, hold on, man. That's like, the one thing I wish that Jesus and Mero had done on the camera and been like, well, let's go outside. Well, not even that. Like, like, bro. Told him like, I apologize, bro. Like, what do you want from me? Like, for me. If you're going to try to confront me and ambush me on camera... You're going to do it like, back, basically. Are you ready to, like, put hands on a bitch? Right, because right, right. If, you, if it's that serious, bitch, you know what I mean? You should have yeah. called me on the spot. If you coming at me on camera, then, bitch, you ready right. to throw hands. So nah, then what it. is it? Like, right. Why are we still talking? Right. That's real. That's all I was saying. I was like, kind of, man, like, how many times you going to get at me, bro? Right. They be having all these entertainment beefs, and now they got all these comedy beefs and all this, man. Comedy beef. Yeah, Yeah, man. they be beefing at be comedy. Beefing, man. Oh, God. Oh, oh Michael, Michael Blackson and uh, Faison. Oh, I seen that man, Mike Blackson. That's my dude. But I, I yeah, all these, I, I don't take comedy be serious, man. I always said to myself when I got in comedy, I said I will never. They say never, say never. I ain't beef with no comedians, man. I ain't disliking no disliking a comedian. I don't care for the comedian dislike. I could have stayed in the streets for that. Yeah, yeah, I could have stayed, man. We could beef all day long in the streets. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's say no comedy beef, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, for, so, the, for the culture, though, like you know, it might be kind of interesting to see. Not unless they go on a roast session. That's what I'm point. saying. Not like, and that's fine. And some of them be really beefing, like, like really beefing, man. I've heard some stories with Cat Williams. He, man, he gets outrageous. Well, he what was you tripping. Mean? Cat tried to bust somebody's head with a bottle. <laughs> yeah, not nah, Cat. I heard Cat put a gun on Face on Love, man. Uh, at the comedy club in L.A. in the front of the comedy club, so I'm crazy. You know? well, he was he was going through his own shit for a minute. Yeah, I, man. I started watching this special. That shit was terrible. Oh man! Oh my god! <laughs> really? It was terrible. I gotta check it out. I couldn't even finish it. Like I was watching it for like ten minutes and was kind of like, "What is this about?" Yeah, I gotta check that out, man. Yeah, Cat, one of the funny ones, man. He was. <laughs> he said he was. Who's some of the funniest comedians to you right now? Uh, sh- I like, I like Kevin Hart. I like Kevin Hart storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, right. I love Kevin Hart storytelling, man. You know, I like uh, Mike Epps, man. Mike Epps, mm. one of my favorite comedians. Cause Mike Epps, how Mike Epps is on stage, that's him off stage. Mm. Like, no bullshit. Yeah. He acts just like that off stage. He like, more, he like one of the more naturally, is fun, naturally, naturally funny comedians like you'll ever see. It looked like he don't even write. All that stuff he talked about, it looked like he ain't even never wrote. It's like other... You know, out of his brain, but you know, his role. He just be talking shit. He just be talking shit, basically, yeah. He's like the uncle at, at the barbecue talking shit. <laughs> I like Mike Cavs. I like Kev. Uh, Tony Roberts. Mm-hmm. He's so animated. You know, uh, he funny. He to me. I like a lot of cats, man. Uh, who else? Uh, Marlon Wayne's new special was pretty good. Yeah. I like oh, yeah. I like that, yeah. 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 He's Did you watch all, the Chris Rock special? Chris Rock, yeah. I like Chris Rock. Chris Rock and Dave, man. They all, like, everybody got their different style. But yeah, yeah, everybody got different styles, but everybody, like especially comedians and comedy lovers, they put every like Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle is the scale. They expect everybody to talk about basically what they talk about, yeah. like politics and get serious and you know say shit that people. Nah, man, you got the safe comedians too, like right. Kev Hart. Like I'm more like on the safe side. I'm gonna say nah, man. I'm not. You're not gonna get me to say something that I want to say. I'm right. not. Nah, I'm not. I'm not that dude. I'm not the dude to even though I come from the streets. <laughs> I ain't finna be up there talking about politics. I ain't talking about no presidents and congressmen. You're I'm not, not talking about our president having nah, a hell paid nah. off a stripper or excuse nah. me, a porn <laughs> star to stay quiet about their relationship while he was married nah. and his wife was pregnant. You nah. got cracking jokes about that? I'm not cracking jokes about You're Trump. You not cracking jokes about the hood twins? <laughs> I'm not the hood twins. That is hilarious. I'm saying, come on, bro. I'm not talking. I'm not cracking jokes. Nah, man. See, I'm different. I'm kind of different. Maybe when I get in my bag, I'll dip into it. But nah, man. I ain't you get that check. You know, a lot of things got to yeah, change. Because the game, like I said, I just play. I just play the game. Yeah. I just play the game. I'm more of a part of playing the game. You know, look at Kev Hart. Kev Hart, the hottest comedian still, and he's yeah. been the hottest for like the last five plus years. Yeah. And you don't hear him talking about none of that. He played the game. True. He played the game. He played. Yeah, he stand. That's what I, exactly. Stay, stay, stay in your lane. I, stay, I just stay in my lane, man. I, I talk about and I listen. I'm from San Francisco. I mean, I grew up in the hood. I got enough to talk about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know the tenderloin, 
all type of, you know, stories about the fiends in the hood, my family crazy. I talk about a lot, man. You should talk about the Fell Street Festival. Exactly. The what? The what? Is it Fell Street? What's that? Cherry, not Cherry Blossom. The, uh, where, the, where everybody comes out in dominatrix and they make it? I talk about that. Do you? Yeah. Swear to God. I talk about... Uh, Wait a minute. What is, what is, is it, it called? Is it, is it a call that... Folsom, Folsom Street. Street. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. But it's something else, though. It's another name for it. I talk about the beta breaker. Excuse me. Oh. The beta breakers. I mean, they be naked and running around doing that shit too. That's what I talk about. That yeah. I feel like but you can only do that out here. Like all right. be having little runs and shit in Boston and all these other places, but they be like fully clothed and jogging. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out here, time is free. Fucking superhero costume. Right. <laughs> all type of native, shit. I hate all that shit. Really? Right. It fucks up traffic. Yeah, it's it's because oh. we in Fillmore. We in the dead smack center of the shit. I yeah. can't get out. Yeah. And then yeah. if I do happen to get out, I can't get back in. The worst, yeah, it's a wrap. The worst thing they ever done to Fillmore was take the freeway from Fillmore. I know. That's After the worst. The Fell Street. Yeah. That's Fell? the worst. Yeah. That was a wrap. That's the worst. Like you got to drive hella far <laughs> to get on the freeway. <laughs> Seriously, just to get on the freeway. Come on, man. Yeah, that's terrible. Then yeah. you got to deal with thirty minutes on the bridge and to get with you. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, like, they, that's yeah. the worst thing they ever did to Fillmore. Take the take they the worked freeway. just, bro. Yeah, they worked just. But what, what's next for for Hannibal Thompson, man? Like, what you? Uh, I just got a uh, a distribution deal with uh, with uh, Comedy Dynamics. It's like the number one uh, uh, comedy uh, distribution company, number one uh, in the world. Hmm. So, oh, they, okay. so they're pretty big. I got a um, I'm working with them uh, in this other company uh, distributing my comedy special called Twelve Stories. Right. I shot. I've been shot it. So you know, it just been sitting, yeah. and ready to go. So I've been talking to them to um, get that going, and then I got a movie on Amazon Prime. That I started in called um, the American Dream. Oh, okay. So that's um, that been going good for me. And What's then, the movie about? Uh, it's about uh, two high school football players, mm-hmm. teenagers. Um, we right before we go to college, we get into like drugs and selling drugs, and we like drug runners. You know, just to make a little money, not knowing what we doing, you know, and we get caught up in some trouble yeah. with my uncle. Uh, it's a um, it's a pretty good movie. It took like four months to shoot, man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, cool. it took for a few few years to come out. But I know me and my guy Gian Shaw, we the stars of the movie. Uh, Marcus Spencer is the producer, mm-hmm. so um, that's doing good. It's on Amazon Prime right now. If you're a member of Amazon Prime, I think you can watch it for free or something. Yeah, right now. yeah it's free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's been moving good. It came out uh, last August actually, but it's been doing, still doing good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You got any shows coming up that we can go check out? Yeah, man. I got uh, where I'm at. Uh, I got I, on four twenty. On uh. Yeah, 420, I got the Black Repertory Theater in Berkeley. Okay. That's my next show out here that I can think of. Other than that, um, I got Carson City, Nevada coming up. Uh, going back overseas to perform for the troops. I'll probably be in Canada in two months. Hmm. Back up in Canada. I go to Canada like four times a year. Right. Yeah, they love me up there, so. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Well, all right, I man. Well, you got to make Canada, sure you man. tap in with us so we can come check you out, brother, and support you. Yeah, no you know, doubt, man. No happy doubt. to see that you, you know, turned your life around and. I had to, man. Got I had to straight and narrow. Yeah, I had to, man. I ain't, I wasn't trying to end up in goddamn not Pelican Bay because nowadays you in the streets, you skip the state, you go to the feds. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't trying to get fedded and all that shit, man. All my partners, a couple of my partners went to the feds and all that shit. So I wasn't trying to, you know. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Let me go on, start this little comedy thing. They keep kicking out these doors, trying to take me to jail. So I'm gonna do this, and it's been going good since, though, man. So That's what's up, man. Well, before we get up out of here, man, let the people know where they can find you. Uh, Hannibal Thompson on everything. Hannibal, on Instagram, Hannibal Thompson, uh, Twitter. Man, you got to spell that, man. Like, Hannibal. Hannibal is kind of hot now. You know how to spell Hannibal. H A N N I B A L. Last name Thompson. T H O M P S O N. On Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Say hi. I say hi back. I talk to people. I'm a sports dude. Yeah. So I talk a lot of sports and shit. I get in a lot of arguments with Warrior fans, you know. What you a Uh-oh. fan of? I'm a Laker fan. Okay. I'm a Laker fan. Listen, y- y'all both grew up in the city. You grew up in grew up in Fillmore, uh, uh, basically. Vallejo, that's closer to the Warriors. I grew up in the. I grew up out here. I spent four years in Vallejo. Well, I'm just saying, play, though, nah, like, I ain't from Vallejo to San Francisco. <laughs> yes, Vallejo to San Francisco. Now, growing up in San Francisco, how many Warrior fans could you count on your hand? Oh no, all was, of them. Exactly. I was a Kobe fan. I used to fan. be the San Francisco Warriors. I was a Kobe fan. I ain't gonna lie. I was a Kobe fan coming hey, up. Come on, man. Everybody, Everybody ain't gonna tell the truth like that. Everybody else. No, I'm talking about no, no, we I know we used to be the San Francisco Warriors, but I'm saying growing up, man, you ain't hear nobody talking about no Warriors. I'm talking about people who you grew up with, slept in the bed with, 
ran around with. You, we weren't talking about no wars, man. You talking about so Jordan? y'all never went to games? No, they used to try to give us free tickets at the YMCA, <laughs> and, we, and, and we never went to the games. I'm just being, I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, come on, man. man. Maybe I'm different because nigga, I went. You want some free tickets? Right. I'm out. But I'm saying, how many on, on both of your fa- on both of your hands? How many can you count? That you knew that was real warrior yeah, fans. It's just my family. Exactly. So I was about to say. See, my family, both my family from Filmo, both sides, mm-hmm. and I only get to name two people. Two people that was warrior fans. Oh, their whole life. Yeah, that's my, new. Their whole life. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In our generation, we was Jordan fans. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, then it went to Kobe, Kobe and the Lakers, and then you know what I'm saying. It didn't trigger on. Now everybody is warrior fans because they win it. Yeah. Oh, really. Yeah. I mean, that's a part of it. There's definitely a lot of hype beasts out here. But. I'm glad they're coming back to the city, though, which is dope. People hate on that. Yeah, they can hate all they want to. That's, be- that's a, <laughs> woof. That's a beautiful thing. The station. It's right. Great. That's a beautiful thing. That's dope. But anyway, man, we're going to get up out of here. I'm DJ Black Mark. Say Diddy Hannibal Thompson. Yes, sir. And that's it. Another episode of the Street Life Series. We out of here.